postpartum thyroiditis. So many diseases are related to thyroid gland. One among them being autoimmune disease, autoimmune thyroiditis. First, let me explain to you what is autoimmune disease. See, in everyone's body, there is a body protective mechanism which we call as immune system. If there is any bacteria, virus, allergy, fungus, anything which tries to attack our body, the immune system, the body protective mechanism system gets activated. It tries to uh, block the external factors and destroy it. Those having this autoimmune disease, without any external triggering factor, their immune system gets activated and it targets their own body organ and it tries and it destroys it. If it happens to be autoimmune thyroiditis, the organ which is damaged, it is thyroid gland. Now, autoimmune thyroiditis, there are so many different types of autoimmune thyroiditis. The commonest being Hashimoto's thyroiditis and postpartum thyroiditis also comes among, uh, under that. So, the commonest being Hashimoto's thyroiditis, the next being Dicurvan thyroiditis, then postpartum thyroiditis, the rarest form being Riedel thyroiditis. So, here in uh, our topic is postpartum thyroiditis. So, why it happens during pregnancy? Usually, this happens only after delivery, postpartum. That is usually weeks, four to six weeks after delivery. And it is not common in all the patients. Those patients who have type 1 diabetes mellitus, they are more prone, is a risk factor. And those who already had or have thyroiditis and the, and the uh, blood examination shows TPO antibodies, these patients are more prone for postpartum thyroiditis. Here what happens, the thyroid gland is destroyed slowly. So initially they will be in a stage of hyperthyroidism where the thyroid hormone levels are more in the blood. And as and when the disease progresses, the thyroid hormone level decreases which is called as hypothyroidism. So what happens is because of the hormonal changes in the body, the body protective mechanism, the immune system, there will be immunomodulatory changes. This leads to the effect which is seen in the thyroid gland. Now, this risk factors I have already mentioned. So, the patient complains. So, initially, the complaint will be related to hyperthyroidism. So, they will be complaining of nervousness, palpitation, tremors and so on. As and when they go into a stage of hypothyroidism, the complaints are going to be different. They will say they have loss of appetite, weight gain, hair loss, hair becoming thin, hair becoming grayish, loss of outer part of the eyebrows, cold intolerance. So when the periods being menstrual become normal, they have menstrual irregularities, constipation, pedal edema, muscle pain, joint pain. These are the few complaints related to hypothyroidism. On examination, the thyroid gland is enlarged and during the initial stages when they are in a stage of hyperthyroidism, we will we'll get feature, the findings according to that and later stage and uh, when they are in a stage of hypothyroidism, the findings will be different like what I have already mentioned. In hypothyroidism, the pulse will be low, BP will be slightly high and all the other features I have already mentioned. So, we need a diagnosis now. When you do a blood test, that is thyroid function test first, which gives us the status of the thyroid function. In the initial stages, when they are in a hyperthyroidism stage, TSH will be low and T4 will be more. When they come to the late stage, when they are in the hypothyroidism stage, TSH is going to be high, T4 is going to be low. Now, we need a diagnosis. In the blood test, serum thyroglobin will be elevated, TPO antibodies will be elevated and anti-C1Q antibodies will be elevated. So, we have a diagnosis with that. When you do an ultrasound scan of the neck, it shows enlarged thyroid gland and echo, echogenicity will be low, vascularity will be little low. These are the usual features. Now, the recent advancement in ultrasonography is we have spectral Doppler scan. 
which gives us little more accurate diagnosis coming to the treatment part so as i have already mentioned initial stage of hypothyroidism it is dealt with we give beta blockers and if necessary thiamines and as and when they go into stage of hypothyroidism we stop the beta blockers and other drugs and we have to start on elthroxin so here i want to tell you that whenever you take elthroxin keep in mind it has to be taken empty stomach as soon as you get up in the morning you brush your teeth you take this tablet on empty stomach with sip of water and don't take any other tablets along with that and the you don't drink or eat anything for next one hour this is the technique of taking the elthroxin tablet so this will go on for few months till the doctor tells you usually it reverts back to normal so every two months you need to take check your tsh and when it becomes normal t3 t4 and tsh becomes normal elthroxin can be stopped now before winding up i want to tell you that postpartum thyroiditis when it becomes normal there is a high po uh, possibility that during the next pregnancy also th this can come up especially in those patients where the tpo antibodies are high thank you so much